It's been super wet here at the Ozarks, but Evan and I planted this field with the Genesis drill a few days ago. We've had some rain on top of that, so I had to wait, but I'm crimping this morning. A lot of people ask if you can use a roller, but crimping is different. It's like a roller or a drum with about six inch fins on there every now and then, and that's designed to crimp or crush the stem of a big tall cereal rye, whatever, every eight, 10 inches up through there. And that crimping of the stem, that crushing of the stem, well that keeps it from getting nutrients up to the seed head that's developing. Now if you crimp too early, well it's like driving through your yard. You leave some tire tracks for a day or two and then a few days later you can't tell you drove through the yard. So crimping works best on crops or at least a percentage of the crop is tall and making a seed head in what's called the doe stage. If you kind of pull the husk back, you can see that endosperm or the center of a seed forming, and it's still got plenty of moisture. If it's hard, then that seed is viable. And when you crimp it, you would just be planting more seeds. You'd be knocking it down. I'm six foot tall. You can see here that the rise, you know, tall as I am, give or take on which stem, a little shorter, a little taller and I pull uh, these seed heads here and you can, one thing I like to do is just do this, kind of, you know, almost like a deck of cards. You're just doing that through there. And you can see they're rounding out, they're filling out. So what you want to do is kind of get some of the husk material off. Let's get down to the rice seed. There's the seed. You can tell it's really green, certainly not viable, but when I squish this, hopefully it'll show up. Oh yeah. It's shining, I can see it in the sun. I don't know if you can see that moisture on the end there, but full of moisture. Oh yeah, you can see the water. Hope that shows up on the camera. You can see the water on the end of my finger. And right here, it's real shiny. I'll try to catch the sun with it. That's dough stage right there. I'm calling this early to middle dough stage, but my new crop is tall enough that I want to go ahead and crimp so it doesn't get so tall the tractor tires or crimper might damage my new crop. Everyone worries that that timing's critical, but it'll be in the dough stage, been on the species two, three weeks, even longer. It's been a cool, wet spring here, so it's lasting longer. And you just wanna make sure it is in that dough stage, so when you crimp it, it will stay down and not pop back up like grass in your yard. Crimping's a bit less technical than drilling. You're not worried about seed depth, and you can get away with a bit more with a crimper than you can a drill. So you can run a bit faster. When I say faster, I crimp at three, four on a real flat field, maybe five miles an hour at the most. A Goliath crimper like what I use, you can put water in there for added weight. But the seeds here are mature enough that added weight wouldn't help any. So I'm just saving wear and tear on equipment and not putting water in the crimper. Now, you see a few things standing up darker green, that is oats. Oats aren't quite in that dough stage yet, and they're so much shorter than a cereal rye, you don't give me crimps in there. I don't mind if oats go ahead and make a crop. They're part of a blend, so they're not solid. And when those oat seeds mature, turkeys come in here and wear them out. I've never had a problem with volunteer oats because of the turkeys, deer, and squirrels eating them. I've already crimped this section here and not crimped that. So you see the oats, they got smashed over literally just a couple minutes ago, but they're already standing back up. The seeds are filling out, but when I take an oat seed and get the husk off and squeeze it, I'm not getting a lot of moisture out of it yet. It's just barely in the dough stage. And again, this oat plant, I mean, I got the roots out, so that's the whole thing. And it's not crimped anywhere, and you can see the cereal rye. I mean, it's obviously crimped right there. You can see it's so much taller. And when I just run my finger down here, you can tell it's broken there or crimped and crimped there. You can see this is a perfect example. It doesn't break the stem. It's just crimping it. And right here, it's just smashing it. But the oat, it was just so short and so green, not quite as ripe. You need to see the color difference between here and the cereal rye. Uh, it's just not ripe enough for the crimper to work. And again, that's okay because when these seeds mature, that gobbler, that buck, that squirrel, whatever, it's gonna be out here eating this, getting little carbohydrates in the middle of the summer. 
you may have a wheat that's a shorter variety in your blend and it may not crimp quite as well but if a wheat makes a seed head i'm not worried about a volunteer crop because again birds rodents squirrels deer whatever are going to consume those seed heads still rye seed heads they're not near as palatable and they're very very viable so if i didn't crimp this and let the summer crop grow right up through there planting the summer release blend summer browse pressure release type blend uh, I would have a big volunteer crop midsummer or cereal rye coming. You think about one seed making a stalk or multiple stalks that's got 20, 30, 40, 50 viable seeds on it. Obviously, you would be planting way too thick. So you need to terminate this crop. Probably the second most common question about this process is, hey, I got a brush hog or a flail mower or a sycamore. Can't I just mow it? If you think about all those mowers in the hay field, wherever you've used them, Guys, those mowers leave clumps from time to time. They don't leave that even spread like you see behind me. When you run for the crimper, you're just laying stuff down. You're continually laying stuff down. So crimping is much preferred than mowing. And also a lot of species, mowing won't terminate. Again, think about mowing your yard. I'm not a big yard guy. And when I let my yard go a week or two extra, maybe Tracy's out of town visiting her dad, there's a gazillion weed species out there. Mowing is not terminating broadleaf weeds or the grasses. Crimping will do a much better job of terminating those mature grasses like cereal rye, wheat, and other tall grasses that are making a seed in the dough stage. Crimping serves another purpose, not just terminating that winter crop as we're planting that spring crop, but it's also laying it down like you see behind me and making a great weed mat. It's mulch. You might put mulch in your garden or around your flower bed. If you get a thick layer of mulch on there, not many weeds are gonna come up through there. And here's how that works. If you think about, you've probably never seen a ragweed seed or a pigweed seed. They're very small, they're like bits of flour. And so you lay this three or four or five inch deep mulch mat down it gets warm and wet, it rains, temperatures are warm like it is today, and that seed wants to germinate compared to a smaller seed, like maybe you think a clover seed or a buckwheat seed. Well, those weed seeds are typically way smaller than even a clover seed. You don't ever see clover-sized seeds on a ragweed or something like that. Those little bitty seeds, they get warm and wet and germinate, but they don't have enough energy to get through three or four or five layers of mulch, reach up there and make a couple leaves and then photosynthesize so they starve to death. And mulching has become my weed control. I don't use any herbicide. I, I may spot spray in the timber. I got a bad nasty weed in there or something, but this food plot is not gonna be treated with the herbicide. I'm gonna make one pass with the drill, my Genesis, one pass with my Goliath crimper, and then I'll be back about August 15th or so to plant my fall crop, and I'm done. I've known some folks, myself included, back in the day that can get in trouble. You got your no-till drill and your crimper, and you're all excited and you go out there and crimp first. Then you try to drill through it. Well, that drill, is not built to crimp through five inches of a thick mulch mat. It's gonna have trouble with those blades cutting through all that vegetation, green vegetation, and getting through there deep enough to put the seed in the soil. So it's very important that we plant with a drill first and then crimp. If the seeds are in the dough stage, you waited a little bit later to plant, boy, you could drill and then crimp a couple hours later as soon as you got the tractor and change implements. If you're like me and I saw some rain coming and planned a bit earlier, you may want to wait a week or so. And if we look down, I've got new germination coming up, but that brand new germination is so pliable, crimper goes over and it just pops back up. You don't want to crimp if you've got corn or milo, a real stiff stalk, six, eight, 10 inches tall, you're liable to break that stalk and hurt the crop. In fact, there are benefits to waiting till that crop has germinated and got a good start. Cause you know, if you had bare ground, you guys that still disc or whatever, and you plant soybeans, it gets about lip high on a deer and they wipe it out and you got nothing to show for your efforts, but some weeds out there. When you're planting in five, six foot tall cereal rye like I am, and you let it germinate, get that root system established, get some leaves, start photosynthesizing. It's got a head start on the deer because deer don't like sticking their head down and 
five, six foot tall, thick vegetation, they can't really detect predators as well. They can't see them as well. They can't hear them as well. So there's like a little greenhouse effect. When you let that crop get started in that standing crop, there are many advantages to that because of the greenhouse effect. Not only keeping deer browse at bay, but also if it happens to get, you know, unexpectedly cold, gets kind of cold, well, some of that cold wind is being blocked off in cold temperatures by all that tall vegetation. And again, the humidity and whatnot's gonna set down there low where the vegetation's thickest and make that little greenhouse effect to protect that young crop. Crimping is less expensive than a herbicide application and faster. You're not stopping and putting water in, getting herbicide all over you, you know, mixing it up, going back to the house, getting another batch of water. Crimping has become one of my favorite tools to produce successful food plot crops. If you've got a really weedy food plot, you know, man, you've got pigweed already growing or something really bad, nasty out there, you're probably gonna have to back up and use a herbicide treatment because those young pigweeds that have already established, they're not gonna be terminated by a cripper. So if you've got a bunch of bad, nasty weeds growing and you're planting a blend like I strongly prefer, there's no good herbicide application that's not gonna kill at least a portion of the species in the blend. So here, this food plot's been planted a lot of years. There's a couple of weeds out here, but not enough for me to worry about. But if you've got a really weedy plot, maybe you disc it last year or something, you stirred up all that weed seed base, you may need to use a herbicide application this year and get set to crimp later this year or next year. Crimping's a very natural process. I relate it back to when the bison were on the Great Plains and they would come through and knock down more mature vegetation. Of course, water passing by, they'd urinate, salivate, and defecate, add a little fertilizer and microbes. People focus just on fertilizer, but microbes are actually more important. They're doing the bulk of the work in the soil and start that new crop. A crimper is just like that bison going by trampling stuff, a herd of bison. Except, of course, it's not urinating, salivating, and defecating, but don't worry, there are plenty of rabbits and deer and other creatures here at the Proving Grounds. I see deer scat out in these plots when I get off to check and make sure the cereal rice crimped or broken every now and then. And I'm seeing lots of scat out here, and I know I'm adding fertilizer and microbes just by those critters coming out of timber in here to eating the clover and stuff that's still palatable while I'm crimping down the cereal grains. Putting that together, I'm just following that natural process, the creator's process that built some of the best soils on the planet across the prairie. And you can do that on a much smaller scale in your food plots. And I find that following the creator's plan, well, that is the best plan, not only for our food plots, but for our lives. So I strongly recommend that you take time every day to get in the word and read about and study, meditate on the creator's will for your life. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.